Hi. Hi, Marie. Good. So we have audio and we are all good. Are you planning to share video or you're just going to share your slides? I'm just going to share my slides. Okay. That's perfectly fine. So, um, so what, 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 how, how are you doing? How are you doing today? I'm, I'm doing good. Pretty busy day. Um, we, we were also watching that uh, SpaceX uh, for the rocket launch, but unfortunately... Yeah, that's there. a pity, right? We have to wait a couple more days to see that. Well, I, I think it's a good way that the weather was bad and they took the right decision. I was concerning. Uh, so definitely the life is better, uh, most important than anything else. True, uh, that that's true. Yeah. But still a pity because it would fly over here. I would yeah. ac probably actually see it. Uh, yeah. since it's dark and the new launch time on Saturday is earlier so then it would probably be too light for me to see them fly over uh, so that's a pity but anyway you're, you're absolutely right safety first oh yeah definitely they, they did the right decision I would think why when they were going at the first place the, thank you Martin the floor is yours all right I'll start with namaste to everyone uh, we are in pandemic and um, we have been observing that handshakes and any, any kind of shake is not good and healthy. So we should be um, uh, first uh, follow some etiquettes and you know start from the, our home. I start thanking everyone who are helping today, nurses, doctors, all the frontline workers. And definitely um, thank you for everyone who is hosting this. Um, thank you for, and sorry for anyone who has ever lost his family and friends and everyone stay healthy and keep working thank you for that all right um this is the alert about the next year conference which is coming hopefully we'll be on the track and we'll be meeting uh, face to face uh, in vegas here's our sponsor slide thank you for all these sponsors for sponsoring this such an event in a quick time this is about me um, um I'm a global CTO for Golden 5 Consulting and I'm a CEO for LAEX UG Foundation. Golden 5 Consulting is a Microsoft Gold Partner and Tier 1 CSP. Uh, we are located in three locations, US, Canada, India. Um, I've been um, talking and working in Microsoft Exchange, Office 365, Azure AD, AD and other Microsoft technologies. I speak Hindi and English. I I talk a little bit of almost all languages of India and a little bit of Spanish and French I've been practicing. Um, so my session is always sponsored by my company which is letting me do uh, my uh, sessions during the office hours or even uh, after hours, after hours preparing all that. All right, if you have not entered in the raffle, I hope you would have already. Yeah, this is the opportunity. Enter in, your, in the raffle today um, and you may win uh, this Oculus. All right, um, I'm ready with my coffee. Um, otherwise, you can uh, get a beer or anything which and re relax there and um, or enjoy up your pint. Let's start with a quick agenda. I'm excited about it. I hope you guys are excited about it too. So. First item in the agenda is Office 365 identities, planning considerations, utmost concern, graph permissions, design factors, provisioning and reprovisioning, foreign identities, self-services, security. So I'm going to cover all um, items here in the, as a deep dive. All right. In Office 365 identities options, I would like to um, share that there are basically only two options. Identities can sync from Active Directory, which is on prem, using Azure AD Connect, AD Connect tool, um, previously named as DirSync. Um, or you can directly create cloud identities. So they, they'll be called cloud only identities. So there are only two ways, two options that are there, um, but um, how you further use them, that matters. Do you want to use Active Directory Federation service with or without proxy? 
or you want to use pass through authentication with or without seamless sign single sign on um, or you want to use password hash sync with or without single sign on that's what you think normally but there are other options if you are not ready for all these three and you have the option to also federate using third parties like one login or Okta as the front-end identity synchronizer you can synchronize your AD to one login you can synchronize your A AD to Okta or if you are not using Active Directory you may synchronize your AD um, um, your directory to one login or Okta and let Okta and one login um, synchronize your identities to Office 365 um, th those are the other options which um, you might not, not have thought about um, we're gonna deep dive on those in the next few slides um, before that we'll understand the planning considerations the planning in such an um, is an important thing for identities so identity is your basic crest of the pizza that's how we should understand in an easy in a normal way and how important it is if it is thick or thin based on your choices and right choices what matters today you know um, maybe you need more protein so you need the better toppings on the pizza right uh, maybe you like more bread part so you want thick bread um, so here are a few items which I consider as a planning consideration there's a one-time deployment so we should understand that that we are not gonna do it every day um, or we're not gonna replace it every now and then next point is consider effort versus redoing so um, if you spend 10 hours today you don't want to repeat that time rather you want to invest that 10 hours in doing something new something better something more improving or something more challenging you don't you don't want to repeat that you don't want to um, do something temporarily this is building your uh, basic uh, basic identities basic base of your infrastructure um, you want to build it more uh, concrete and uh, consider that loss of effort versus redoing if you do that that that's most important part consider pros and cons of every option which I have explained you earlier maybe you wanna do the pass, uh, pass uh, password hash sync you wanna do the pass through authentication or you may wanna do ADFS with the ADFS proxy called WAP um, but you may not you have to consider that they, that may require four servers in the high availability with the high availability in load balancer so overall then in the planning consideration we have to consider that what will be the pro and cons of each and every scenario which I'm planning to do what is good for my organization then do you wanna you wanna plan for serverless or or with server maybe your organization is planning to go serverless looking into today's situation everyone working remote no one is going in the office why do I need a server why do I want everybody to come to authenticate to my servers um, in the office rather when everyone can work through their home why don't they directly go to the cloud so that you might want to plan that maybe serverless um, that could be one consideration other thoughts are why not ADFS I mean you need to get the answers to say yes I don't want ADFS because of XYZ I'm not getting um, um, more benefit of ADFS through ADFS so I don't want that um, that could be one consideration um, same way um, next uh, SAML so if you are using SAML today for authentication AD, ADFS got to cover ADFS supports that so you, you don't have that's not a question today 
Similarly, security, ADF has got it covered, you ADF has provide ADF has proxy, so you keep ADF has servers in the proximity area and you put the ADF has proxy in the front end, so that is, is taken care, your ADF has servers are safe and secure. Um, high availability is another plan consideration you want high availability you want to put the load balancer you have to add that cost uh, you have to add that load balancer configuration uh, cost so that's part of the consideration um, different domains um, ADF has got you covered so um, or Microsoft Federation got you covered so you consider that you're part of a multi forest infrastructure enterprise and um, Domain A has a different AD forest, domain B has a different uh, domain B has a different AD forest, and you want to use off one Office 65 that can be done. And ADF has got it covered, means when you are federated and you write your email address, user at domain A dot com, ADFS will receive the token on domain A forest and authenticate you. If you on the other hand, when the user B from domain B logs in, it will redirect the request domain B uh, ADFS server. So, if multiple forest, it, it's not a problem. ADFS got you covered. Um, but you have to plan it, how you want to do it. Um, multi factor authentication, ADFS got you covered. You install ADFS, you forward the request to multi factor authentication. Um, Office 65 provides that, you can use that. So, that's it's not a question. Uh, those, these are my considerations. There could be many more, depending on your situation, your environment. So you, these are the basic levels you should consider, and then probably you may add up on top of it. This will be your um, um, basic level of architecture of ADFS if you deploy in your infrastructure. Uh, this is showing Active Directory uh, as a first and then second is ADFS in front of Active Directory. They are part of a internet zone and then you have a network load balancer, then you have a firewall and then you which is part of TMZ now and now you see the web application proxy which is called ADFS proxy. Um, so it is proxying every request to ADFS server and then NLB and firewall. Let me tell you that it's just not about Office 65. You can also proxy any of the web URL through web proxy. It can go to ADFS. ADFS can forward it to your company proxy if that's what you want as a security. So it is a web application proxy, just not for one thing. It can proxy or it can receive the request. It doesn't have to go to ADFS. It can forward it to internal web server as well. Um, if you need a MFA multi-factor authentication which you configured on ADFS, if you need that, that can be also adopted using this model. Um, so that will apply for every web application. Moving on, I'm going to share this screen which is showing um, in a in infrastructure with AD Connect, ADFS, and the user is requesting a request. Um, this slide is also showing what ports are required to be opened for authentication. So you can see that user is requesting a request um, from the device using 443 port at the bottom um, and, and it also needs um, if it is going to be used a certificate authentication, then it needs 49443, which is hitting web application proxy, which is ADFS proxy. So basically, it is hitting your DMZ with these two ports, which are well, most safest ports. Everyone has this open, uh, mostly SSL port 443, and 49443 is for the certificate authentication. Once you hit that, after that, it's only 443, which is hitting ADFS. The uh, upper picture is showing AD Connect Server. AD Connect Server is replicating your Active Directory objects to Office 365. 
using port 443 and AD, um, AD Connect application software also has configuration option to configure ADFS so that's why it is also showing a down arrow that it's you are configuring ADFS using AD Connect server as well so AD Connect just need a port 80 and 443 most of the request it uses 443 um, so these are normal web ports again you are not uh, risking anything all right next I wanted to talk about password hash hash synchronization authentication um, password hash is a one-time synchronization or it can be synchronized continuously during the day um, but the point is when you synchronize it once then request does not come back to active directory to authenticate then if you see the point number eight user signs in to Azure AD if that hash password password matches stores the password user is user is authenticated so this is pass password hash synchronization it is simplest most simplest you synchronize the password once to office 65 you authenticate it next you don't worry about anything else after hitting Azure AD uh, and these are the other steps for synchronizing the password Um, next is pass-through authentication architecture so this is um, pass-through is providing one architecture which is saying that you don't need ADFS but there are more packets which might be generated there are more uh, pointers which you want to use it so it's not specifically one server specific that you have to go there only it can be uh, providing authentication to the nearby uh, pass-through authentication agent so once you configure this the main thing you want to observe is um, your authentication is coming to pass-through authentication agent wherever this agent is located that request can go there you can configure multiple pass-through authentication agent globally if you are owning a global organization or administrator or architect of global organization which exists in different countries you may want a local authentication coming to the local um, AD forest so you wanna you wanna configure pass through authentication to the local multiple servers um, not um, just one that gonna reduce or shorten the authentication time will provide you faster authentication and um, without any restriction of cross boundaries of crossing uh, one country or something all right moving into the next well these are the pictures I took it from Microsoft so you might see some uh, Contoso or Coopnet so these are all owned by Microsoft I'm just using for this uh, session and explaining much better in the, using these uh, Microsoft to create slides um, however, however, I could have created my own and made it same way, but what is the use and I would think that way um, not owning anything out of it. So um, So this uh, slide shows the browser based seamless authentication architecture um, When an application calls in using the browser how the communication happens um, as first user tries app access an app and um, app redirects to Microsoft Azure AD um, user and Azure AD response back asking user ID user ID is provided by the user uh, which challenge the Corbus ticket um, and then um, it goes down to validate AD um, validate the ticket AD returns the ticket and uh, um, and then challenge the Corbus ticket and then authenticate. So like if you see the trick process, it's like going forward, backward, going forward, backward. So this is um, pass through um, authentication 
which is using this lengthier process. And next slide shows the native app based seamless authentication. So um, a kind of similar process, but just for a change, it checks that if uh, integrated Windows authentication is enabled or not. If that's enabled, that works much faster. Um, moving on, this slide shows together, if we see um, three options together, password, hash, sync, pass through authentication and ADFS. So my slide on the left is showing ADFS. When a user requests an authentication from this device, it hits Azure AD and Azure AD um, and, and Azure AD connects to the Federation proxy. And Federation proxy, we were talking about ADFS proxy or VAP. Um, a web application proxy and that passes the authentication to the federation server. Federation server validates the authentication using Active Directory, returns back the authentication and the user is in. This process looks longer but it's, believe me, it's, very sh uh, it's a very light process. You don't even realize that how fast it has moved. On the other hand, um, AD Connect synchronizes the user to Azure AD. It's that simple. Um, you don't have to do anything extra for that. Um, but you need to have the additional infrastructure for Federation Server and Federation Proxy. Moving on to the next is pass-through authentication. Pass-through authentication is um, less serverless, multiple location-based um, authentication. So use the request and authentication. Azure AD passes that authentication to authentication agents. It can be either one. So wherever the user is, it can be find out location based and it passes the authentication request to Active Directory and authenticates the user. Same way it synchronizes the identities using Azure AD Connect and that's how it works. Now most interesting is password hash sync. Nothing goes back to Active Directory. User sends a login request. Azure AD authenticates the user and let it use the applications. And Azure AD Connect just synchronizes the users and change of the passwords it synchronizes. Now in this table, I'm g sharing the considerations um, like where is one getting authenticated? Where is other getting authenticated? Um, or the first point is where does authentication happens? So you can see password hash sync in the cloud, uh, federation is on-prem and pa pass through authentication with seamless authentication in the cloud after secured password verification with exchange with on-prem authentication agent. So it just send it to the agent or the agent verifies and validates that in the cloud. Um, what are on-prem server requirements beyond the provisioning system AD Connect? So if you provision AD Connect for password hashing none, uh, for agent you need uh, one e each every location and then ADFS is two for ADFS servers and two for VAP servers and you want to have load balancer so two <coughs> if you don't have today then two uh, back-end load balancer two front-end load balancer then two firewalls back and firewall if you two front-end firewalls if you're building from the scratch and you have, don't have it today uh, but if you are such an enterprise, probably you have those infrastructures today. You'll need those extra firewall and um, load balancer servers. Uh, you just need to add more uh, load on those. So you might not, might need to add more compute there, more resources there. What are the requirements for on-prem internet network beyond the proxy? I mean, 
for password hashing is simplest. So most of the time you will see that none, uh, no, or um, yes, seamless, SSO. Um, so everything supports um, Azure MFA. Um, there are um, more benefits of password hash synchronization, but for enterprise, maybe you want to think of um, pass-through pass authentication or federation with ADFS. Um, I've outlined most of the things. Um, maybe I'm missing few, but um, most of it is there. Moving on to the next slide. Serverless SSO with Okta approach. So remember I was talking about Okta. So I wanted to share about what is their approach or it could be similar approach for other providers as well. I'm not just pointing one provider. Um, so the way my Okta represents this is not absolutely correct that um, a single system, you can use single system uh, into this paradigm, the way we are thinking, just not ADFS. It's ADFS versus Okta. Um, so we have the other option, pass through authentication or um, password hashing. So multiple op system is gone. Um, On-premise and cloud. So you have on-premise system and the cloud. Um, um, then you have delay in the sync. That's how Okta presented. Apart from that, I, what I want to highlight is Okta and other providers are providing their own cloud, which is synchronizing your or pulling your Active Directory data and pushing it to Office 65. So you don't have to add AD Connect. You don't have to add ADFS. You don't have to add pass authentication or consider any kind of authentication or synchronization with Office 65. You, that's kind of a serverless approach. You know, if you want to use these providers, I think the goal has to be also achieve serverless authentication to reduce the number of servers and um, all the incoming uh, sync, um, dirt sync request, which might be coming through Office 65. Moving on to the next slide, which will share. Next slide is sharing um, some some approach from One Login, which is One Login is another identity provider company. Um, they have shared another approach, which all other identity providers also support, is only the cloud identity. Like uh, remember, I was talking about cloud identities, so you don't need Active Directory at all. Just create create the identities in their um, cloud and that can synchronize to Office 65. They, you can manage those identities in their cloud. You can configure MFA from their cloud. Um, so you don't have to do anything anywhere else. You can manage uh, one login for authentication and identity creation, and you can create, um, synchronize that with um, Office 65. Why? Now the point is why you need them is probably there are th some third party applications which may want to, uh, where you want to use single sign on using um, one identity or uh, ping or um, Okta or any other provider uh, because you just want one authentication to work. Uh, uh, so that one identity to be, is, I mean, identity to be same for every user uh, and the password should be same. So that's kind of ease to manage that. Um, that's one option they have mentioned. Other option was obviously uh, you can synchronize Active Directory identities and you don't need any server again for this requirement. Um, however, the third option which they have provided or uh, anyone providing is the federation. So you federate with them, they will you will synchronize Active Directory but you also have federated with them. So it's kind of doing the same thing with um, Azure AD. So this is another AD. You're federating everything with them so that you are trusting them. So um, these are the options if you want to use third party. I would think if I want to use third party, I would like to use it for the option one or option two where I'm trying to go serverless. This is not serverless. Uh, this is, this needs servers. 
All right, moving on to the next slide, which is utmost concern. So, what is your concern today would help you to identify the right solution for your organization. Considering today's pandemic, everyone working from home, and you would like to know what is my deprovisioning policy is today. Provisioning is good, adding and giving the right is fine, but how we are protecting ourselves by de deprovisioning the um, the task completion. So if someone has completed the task, now this person doesn't need the access or any service ID which has completed the task, doesn't need access anymore. How you are dealing with that, that's today's, today's concern. I mean, uh, we are not in a good shape today, but we are still doing great, remotely working, trying to keep the economy up wherever we are, in, w in whichever country we are. We are working just not for ourselves, but also for our country that keeping our economy up. Uh, remember, so um, remember, but still those spammers, attackers are not sitting quiet. They're also working. They're also living their living. So they are still attacking. I have been listening all the, all those attacks. Um, so deprovisioning is again one of the most important concern today. Then provisioning is how your provisioning today is another concern. Um, adding licenses, office by licenses, how you're adding, manually going there, adding today one user join, tomorrow another user join, you're adding them ag again and again today, uh, tomorrow. Uh, which license we have to assign, one user wants um, um, E1, another user needs to get E5, so it's not same for every user. Um, depending on the requirements, some someone may, may need Power BI, power, someone may need Power BI Premium 5. So all those different requirements, how you're handling that. Um, then global admins accessing everything from their home. Uh, is it not concerning? Do you want to leave that forever? Or are you, is the security team concerned that enterprise admin logging in from their home? I don't know if they're you know, locking their laptops all the time or they're leaving it on or uh, their kids are touching the keyboard or something, you know, mistakenly deleted the CEO's mailbox or something. Anything possible, right? Permission is there. Um, someone just came in and mistakenly clicked wrong way. You were adding some other extra permission or any um, extra setting. Um, you're adding mailbox size and uh, mistakenly something happened because you were not um, in the right condition. So how risky it is, just I'm thinking, giving some thoughts, not real, not realistic, but um, giving some thoughts. Um, document saving, how everyone is saving the documents. Are you saving in the right place, desktop? Um, how are you saving the des uh, files? Is it concern concerning today? Maybe even so back in the office, maybe not, but um, at least for today, most of you can companies are concerned how much resource access you have uh, working from home and are you keeping all those things safe so I'm working with some attorneys I'm moving their files to office file it's all those evidences I'm going through and I'm moving those files it's it's concerning to me if I give the access in wrong hands so it's risky for them as well so all those are concerns lost identities you lost the power but you have to work something urgently reach out to nearby um, Wi-Fi place it could be coffee shop You're sitting outside the coffee shop I don't think anyone is entertaining inside but you can probably sit outside and using their Wi-Fi and maybe just for a fluke you lost your phone or something and you lost the identity and someone else may get access all thoughts are coming um, then again uh, you are accessing everything from the open network we don't know if the network is safe or not so your device can get some malware or can get ra ransomware um, we don't know if your personal device is proof bit locker all the securities are enabled or not so those are utmost concern of 
today's environment when uh, we are using we are using Office 65 identities or even uh, working from remote. Um, okay. Other things which I'm considering is in the identity space is assigning application permission so you assign the permission to the application someone has um, application gets a permission and you have that permission on that application some one of the application I have assigned is graph permission so this is, I've added the link how I did assign it um, but then if I'm assigning the permissions like this it's hard to go back and remove that identity permission it cannot be done every day every day this way so we have to consider that um, that how we're gonna remove it or block it one day when we need to block it then um, designing factors when you're designing identity solution for you for yourself or customer you have to consider single sign-on has to be smooth just do it once and done don't have to pop up again and again security has to be there maybe multi-factor authentication and other security options I'm going to talk about it in a few seconds um, easy to manage it shouldn't be so difficult that I'm going 10 different places I don't know where it is I have to go there 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 um, not that it should be easy to manage um, automation should be there so it's few things can be taken care of automatically um, it should be easy for admins it should be easy provisioning easy and timely deprovisioning so now we are not more concerned about provisioning we are more concerned about deprovisioning cloud based or on premises based servers so you need on premise servers for entities or cloud based is okay for organization directory synchronization to another service single sign on provider like one login or okta or someone else or not is a big decision um, only one synchronization or multiple synchronization um, one is recommended because it has less chances of overriding one thing maybe you have a situation where you are synchronizing identities from different different domains so you may be doing it that you may be having multiple sync but I think I want to consider one place to synchronize all identities I want to use one AD connect to synchronize all AD forest it can, it, you can have multiple AD forest but as far as you are able to access other AD forest AD connect can be configured to use multiple AD forest to synchronize identities um, I already discussed that point um, then non active directory for us maybe you have Oracle identities providers um, or novel directory services you synchronize those to um, third party like Okta or one login and they will synchronize your identities to office 65 and that way you want to do that so that's one of the other design factor provisioning and deprovisioning now active so it's important active directory group based license management if you do that that's add on the automation you have a member added to the group it synchronizes with ad connect and you boom you're done next automation based uh, relevant license group management so even you have to add somebody in the license group why don't we have an automation when you provision the user when you create the user you add a custom attribute he belongs to department number five or department number four and based on that attribute we can uh, configure an automation agent that agent will add that user to particular group and that group based licenses licensing will work right um, then adding members in a group to give the permissions using Windows 2016 Active Directory time-based group me membership that's a new feature then privilege identity management in Office 65 we have privilege identity management which can assign temp uh, per admin permission for limited time and it can remove you in after some time whatever you configure automatically so every evening 
there's no global admin that can be the u most useful thing so even if someone is hacks your global admin's password can do nothing because he this person is no more global admin then access package request approvals and access review now what is new here but probably you might have heard all first four points earlier but the fifth and six seven is kind of a new access package request I'm going to show you in a moment now um, in this slide I'm going to show that access management so the foreign and um, partner identities you might have multiple foreign partner identities in organization who comes add the work like a, like the consultants and they do the work and they're gone after three months four months six months uh, what about the identities there have you really blocked them that's kind of a concerning so added partners added foreigners but did we remove them ever that's my concern do you have the same concern then you have to think about it um, either use identity governance which is a feature in office 65 which provides access package access review and or you can use um, Windows 2016 Active Directory group with time-based management and privileged identity management so if you are or you can use both so maybe just not one thing you can use all f all of it um, so access package which comes in Microsoft identity governance it allows you to create an access package for different departments you join human resource you have an access package that which only given to human resource you join the IT team then IT team has different package and you get the access by requesting the access package and your manager approves it and you get the access I mean configures your role and permissions everywhere um, once this is done after a few months if you're temporary consultant your manager can manager can request access review to identify if you still need the access if you still need the access manager will have to reapprove it and you're good but if you don't ma this request will say okay deny I mean now I would say I'm done with this three months project you can remove my access that's fine my SharePoint sh my SharePoint development work is done I'm done about it um, I, I moved on to the X exchange project now so I'm good there but Identity governance requires EMS E5 or Azure AD Premium 2 license. So you have to consider that if you are going to use that. Moving on to the self services options. So in the self services option, Microsoft Office 365 also provides self service password reset. Try to use it. This is the best thing. You don't have to call anyone, no one has to call you to reset their password, configure it it's easy anyone can receive a authentication code on the phone email configure it they're good um, then you assign automated licensing assignment then you assign automate uh, automation in license removal if anyone is gone your agent should be removing their license as well um, automation in application access provisioning um, then automation um, in time-based deprovisioning as well then privileged identity management these are all automated stuff if you have it configured correctly you are good you don't have to worry about much and this is kind of a self-service I would say moving on to the security this is probably my last slide um, I'm not going to take much time here so in the security there multiple options Office 5 provides um, you start with Azure multi-factor authentication it provides second level of authentication if someone has password they have they also need your configured device or authentication of another factor authentication um, then you need to have uh, you, then you can also configure privilege identity management like I said global admins you are global admin during the day but in the evening you are not so if, even if you have my phone or my login you cannot do anything unless you know where to go and how to assign the uh, access back and the when you assign yourself the access everyone gets alert so all of the admins get alert that okay Prabhat got privileged identity management global admin access now 
to is it supposed to work at this time is this 2 a.m why is logging in i'm i'm in the different time zone and i'm checking with him on the chat that oh are you in are you working okay that's fine i was worried uh, because it was not, it's the wrong time then azure information protection we didn't talk much about it but azure information protection is encryption you assign you create the template once assign the template to your document or the email if your document is left on your friend's computer he opens it but he cannot check anything inside because the moment he opens he needs to provide login the login prompt comes to you as with the MFA and it fails right there so that data is is a crap for other person if you have configured Azure information protection encryption so all the documents are encrypted and assigned the permission to you no one else can access it um, that <coughs> then you can configure conditional access we didn't talk much about it um, that's not related to identities but for organization office overall so you can configure um, conditional access or there are security defaults conditional access probably required as your active directory p1 license which you don't want to invest but then you can use um, security defaults which configures little basic default configuration to secure your office 65 environment then self service password reset i talked about already um, you can reset the password there um, then office 65 atp is for email um, uh, scanning and protecting you from the bad URL or attachments. Then Intune, uh, you can start using the Intune for your um, users and that provides at least the BitLocker and Azure ATP configuration. You can push more security features using the Intune. All right. This probably ends with most, most part of it. Um, you might have already seen some um, charities um, um, slides this is mine if you still have left with some money help me as well this is my charity all right um, if you want to connect me with more I have different places to connect with me on Twitter is my, that's my Twitter handle uh, on the Facebook I have an exchange group um, on YouTube I'm recording all the channels most of the most of my speaking I'm recording will be sharing there and then LinkedIn I have uh, I've had to exchange groups recently I created remote workers community group so I'm trying to share more and more um, sh more and more items or technical uh, helps where what can help remote workers um, in LA I run three user groups um, LAXUG LF uh, uh, for Azure and um, LAEXUG Foundation, uh, all I IT. Uh, so feel free to join them as well. That being said, thank you, everyone. Um, moving to the last. Yeah. yeah, moving to the last uh, Raphael item slide, and then um, maybe um, you want to scan and uh, take it from there. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, we have uh, we, we, we have an initial question, sure. and uh, I in invite everybody to um, uh, to ask more questions using the Q and A. Um, so so let me read out for you the the, the first question sure. that, that that we got. How can we sync a B two B federated identity to an on prem generic identity? B2B. That's a tough question. Um, no, th there are different ways. Um, so he, uh, the question which sounds like, how can we sync a B2B, so business to business identity, and then, uh, um, and then to the Office 65, you said. Um, and 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 can you sync a, a, a B2B federated identity? Yeah. To an on-prem generic identity yeah so that's what I was talking about um, so B2B can be done um, using Microsoft uh, identity management uh, server MIM anyone is, have heard about it can see so AD connect is a subset of MIM um, so that can be used to synchronize the, your identities between two forests 
and configure um, a user you can configure a user you can configure a um, a, a contact or uh, there are multiple I mean two at least two options are there so you can configure either way and you can use either um, completely for the migration purpose or you can use it just for synchronization purpose or just for the gal synchronization between two forests uh, next question if okay well um there there are no other questions yet but i still invite people to uh, to share one if you if you have any um we we are exactly on time actually the the, the clock just hit 50 minutes so uh <laughs> actually we 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 did a you did a great job yeah i was concerned uh, to finish so it on time good yeah well you 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 did, you did perfect